Hey guys, so real quick, um, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I was working on some Chile Verden. This is like a cheater recipe, like all my recipes. And I thought, well, I should just show it to you guys, especially because it's in the crock pot, um, instant pot, I guess they call it. Um, so I just set this to saute and I press start. And it takes a little while to heat up. It gives you 30 minutes, and I guess if you need more time than that, you know, you can start up again. But I probably will take almost the whole 30 minutes because what I do is I take uh, pork meat. Sorry, I just started recording, and of course, people are me aren't uh, aware of that. So this is um, pork country style ribs. You can use whatever cuts. If it's just actual cut of pork that you know, a big old hunk of like the pork shoulder you cut up, whatever it is that you want to use. To be honest, nothing too lean, but of course, with pork, I mean. You do want something that has a little more fat. Now, the reason I like the ribs, as you can see right there, um, is because they're cheap. And then when you put them in a uh, pressure cooker, which is how I used to always cook them, um, before my pressure cooker broke and then I had to buy this guy, uh, they just get really soft. So what I like to do is brown them, though, and you want to brown them really well. So I cut up in hunks. Some chunks are smaller, some are bigger. You probably want to have more uniform, but I don't really care. So you can see that's probably smaller than this huge one over here. And I just put some salt and pepper on them, the seasoning, and there's maybe half an onion just cut in chunks, like, it doesn't matter, big pieces, and there's two garlic cloves in there for flavor. And what I do is I put them in here, and you're going to let them just sit for, you know, five minutes, don't mess with it, and then turn it so that they all start browning. And I'll come back when it's nice and brown and... Hi! You probably want to go darker than I do. I'm just very impatient with this part. And uh, my mom, she always browns it to a crisp, like really nice, so she makes her own sauces and all that, but um, I'm just too impatient. But I do want to get a nice brown sear on it, right? So I'm going to keep doing that until it's really well sautéed, and then when we come back, we're going to add our cheater, salsa verde, uh, herbes. I think they might have a medium one, but this is one I always get. It's like two bucks, maybe cheaper if you buy it on sale. Um, I'll use this whole jar. This is about two and a half pounds of meat, but even if I was doing like three pounds of meat, I would still use this, that same jar. Or even if I was doing one pound of meat, I would still use the same size jar. We're going to add a little bit of water with a little bit of chicken bouillon. You can just do water if you want, but I like the flavor of chicken bouillon. Like, if you're going to add more flavor, I think it's better to that than not, right? So, uh, I'm going to continue browning this, and when I come back, we will add these two things. Uh, this and the chicken bouillon water. And then I'm going to set it to pressure cook for a little while, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And then I'm going to release the pressure. We're going to open it up. I don't know if I'll be able to show you all that. I'll try and show you as much as I can. And then we're going to add in some potatoes um, because these taste so good in there. And when I do the potatoes, I also add in some um, cilantro just for like a fresher taste to make it look nice and neat. And I don't know if I ever made this recipe on my old channel, but I've been making this for probably over a decade. And this is just how I do it. Everyone loves it because it gets really soft, the meat. And the flavor obviously comes from this awesome sauce here. So we'll add those in, then we'll cover it up, and then just let it pressure hook for another maybe eight minutes. Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, sorry about that. This darn timer is going to keep me honest because it says 19 minutes. So I've been doing this for about 11 minutes, and like I said, be patient. Probably use the whole half hour. I'm not kidding. You really want it to be nice and crispy, but you will be rewarded with flavor. But of course, I'm just trying to get dinner on the table, and I probably should have started this a little while ago. So what we're going to do now is take our herdes. I'm going to pour the whole thing in. And usually I get water from my tap and I'll show you what I do. But right now I have some in a in this uh, cup. But usually I would just go ahead and just pour water from the faucet or wherever you like to get your water into here. And it's about a cup of water or so. Kind of there. You know with cooking, it's not as specific, right? With baking you really need to have your measurements down or else you're going to have, you know, a flat cake or a hard cake or cookies that just didn't quite form. But with this kind of thing, I'm just going to get a spoon. This is a teaspoon, right? A smaller spoon is not really a teaspoon because it's not a teaspoon measurement, but something like that. And I would normally put the lid on that and shake it up, give it a good shake so I can get all the sauce that's left in there and kind of mix the water, put the lid on top, screw it down, give it a shake, and then just pour it in. But for right now, I'm just going to pour it in. It's not going to hurt anything. And that is going to make your sauce. Now, the potatoes also kind of help thicken the sauce too. So. That's another reason you want to get those potatoes in there. But for right now, I'm just going to... I don't need to taste this. Bouillon has salt. We already salt and peppered, you know, seasoned our meat. So I don't think it needs anything else. I hardly ever... I'm telling you, I buy a can of salt or a jar or whatever that, you know, thing of salt. It lasts me a year or two because I just don't use that much salt, I guess. 
So uh, what I'm going to do is turn this off, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on it. Make sure that white ring that's in there is in there correctly or else you're going to have a big problem. Um, and then we're going to meet up, with unlock, switch it over to lock. Have I mentioned I love this thing? I guess it's another thing I can kind of review this while we're talking. It's really great. Hopefully I'm not covering... Oh my gosh, was I covering this? Hopefully you heard me talking there. Um, so then what you have to do is set this to no steam, right? So there's steam coming out and no steam. So make sure this is headed at no steam. It's still going to be jiggly and loose, but once it catches pressure, this will stay still. But it might jiggle a little bit during the meantime. So we have that. And then we are going to say that we want... Eh, you have poultry and all these other things, and I have meat in here, but I'm going to press meat stew. This is 35, and I want literally probably about anywhere between 20 and 25 minutes. It's just going to get softer, so that's fine. So meat stew, I'm going to do 22 minutes. It's on high pressure, which is what I want, and start. And it's going to take a while for this thing to come to pressure to seal itself up. So you're going to hear it hissing and making all kinds of noises and all kinds of stuff. Do not open it, do not try it. If you're going to do any of that, you have to release the pressure. You have to stop it, release the pressure, and then you can remove the lid. But there should be any reason why you're going to get in there right now. Just leave it alone, let it do its thing. And when it beeps, that time's up, we will come back and add in our potatoes. In the meantime, I'm going to take two or three potatoes, I'm going to peel them. I'm just going to cut them into chunks, like, you'll see the chunks, the good sized chunks. Um, I'll probably start doing that in like 15 minutes because I don't like them to get brown with the um, air touching them but uh, we'll do that and then I'll get some cilantro and I'll show you what that looks like so when we come back it's because this thing is beeped and it's time to throw in our potatoes and our cilantro and give it a few more minutes I'm just doing a quick check in in case you're watching this as a review of this thing see what it's doing so I don't let it sit like right under my cabinets or anything like that because I don't want any of this getting into my new cabinets <laughs> brand new um, so I just keep it kind of out you know towards the edge. <laughs> it's a little project my son did in pre-K, so cute. Anyway, um, so it's going to release steam, it's going to push, pull this thing in, it's going to jiggle, it's going to make noise, look, it just stop. And it might do it again. Just leave, leave it alone. Do not <laughs> touch anything. And I did want you to see that because that is a big deal. That's hot steam. If you touch that, you're going to burn your hand. So just know that Whenever it is finally ready, this will click down to 22 and then it'll start the countdown to, you know, zero minutes, obviously. Um, I want to make sure I'm right on that. If it goes down or up. I think it goes down. Yeah. So just be careful. Again, don't touch that. When I release the steam, I'll show you how I release it so it doesn't go everywhere, or shoot everywhere, get on your hand or anything like that. It's not a big deal. Obviously, the thing is made for you to do that, but I like to cover it with a towel. And I'll show you that when it's ready to go. Just want to show you, just clicked over from when it said heat and you guys saw that the pressure stopped um, or escaping the steam and it just clicked over to 22. So it's going to count down and there's 21. So obviously it's been about a minute since it clicked over and I decided to go ahead and show it to you guys. Um, just let it do its thing. When you, the next beep you hear is going to be that it's ready. And that's when we'll release our steam, add the other ingredients and then give it uh, seven to eight more minutes. Okay, so the timer for my beans and the timer for this went off very much at the same time. So it's just been sitting here. So you have to release the pressure here. So when I turn this, you hear it? It's already wanting to pop up. You hear that? It's already wanting to come out. And you can do that. You can let it go out into the air. I don't care. But I like to cover it. So I just take whatever kitchen towel I have. I cover it like this. And then I feel for this thing. And I go ahead and turn it. Now the steam escaping. It's not getting too crazy. It's kind of staying under this. And it's not bothering anything. And I can smell see the they on the way. So it's gonna take a little minute, so I'm gonna leave you guys right here with this. I'm gonna go grab the other veg that I'm gonna add. Well, I guess the way it's not other veg, it is the veg. So here again, potatoes are just kinda chunked. I did wash them, but you know, when you peel them sometimes you get little extra something on there. There's that. And then this is just, you know, like half a bunch of cilantro, just roughly chopped, like an inch chopped. You know, if you have some stem there, that's fine. I usually just rip my leaves off, like, right at the base of the stem where they tie it. You know how they put, like, a little tie on it for you? Okay. It's kind of rip it off. Quieting down. Sorry, I had to pause because I had to sneeze. Still a little bit under the weather. I need to have another one.
But now I take it off and then there's going to be little steam all over the place. And now this thing's all loose. And that's releasing the pressure and I don't know why whenever you do that it says two down here and I don't know if it means two minutes, like I should wait two minutes. I've never done that. I just, as soon as it's ready, you can kind of hear it release. You can turn it. If, as soon as you can turn this, you're ready to go. So I'm just going to take this off and I always like to take it off right over the pot because look at all the water that comes off. Just be careful with that. And I put it down like on a towel or something. And I hope you see it looks really good. But we're just going to kick it up a notch. If you don't want to put potatoes, you know, you just want meat, that's fine. Uh, I would still open it up, put in the cilantro for the fresh taste, and then give it another like five minutes um, of cooking time. So I'm just going to throw those in, throw in the potato. Oh, it smells so good. Actually, there's still a curry smell from the other day. I made curry chicken in here. I put it on my Instagram. I didn't make a video because it's really basic, but just mix that in. Let me see how soft the meat is already, just because we're here and it's open. It's eh, it's still a little bit a little bit rough for my liking. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it 10 minutes. The potatoes are gonna be super soft, but the meat needs to get a lot softer. I haven't made this recipe in a long time because, like I said, I had broken my last pressure cooker and I couldn't remember exactly how long I would put the meat the first time. So possibly, if you don't want your potatoes to be too soft, go maybe 25-30 minutes on the meat. You're not going to overdo it. Well, I mean, you will at some point, but 25-30 minutes on that meat won't overdo it. Again, we have the lid on unlocked. We're going to lock it up. I guess what this three minutes is, is how long it's been since it stopped cooking. So I'm going to make sure our little plug is over at no steam. And I'm going to press our meat stew button again. Well, actually, let me stop it. We have to stop it because that way it clears out. So press start, stop, start, stop. I don't know why I said start, stop. Uh, meat stew. And this time again, I want, I'm going to go for 10 minutes. But if you thought that your meat was pretty good, you did half an hour the first round, then just do, well, I'm going to do 15. I can still stop this. I don't have to let it go the whole 15. So probably when there's still five minutes left, I'm going to come and stop it, okay? So let's just start it. Even on poultry, they don't let you go less than 15. I don't know. I guess they just figure to be safe. Um, or at least that's the lowest you can go. So let's just put this here. I'll come back at 10 minutes. I'm going to manually stop it. I'll show you what that looks like. And we'll test it out. Okay, so I did not set a timer. And I came in and I'm like, oh, it was just a minute off. So again, I'm going to put my towel. I am going to stop it because if I just release the pressure, it still has the time here. So I'm going to press stop. Go ahead and release the pressure. <clears throat> and your towel's gonna smell like whatever <laughs> is in the pot. But I just like doing this better. I don't know, it just scares me to. So this hot, even with my hand right here, it feels really hot um, up here touching it. So I just like to keep that at bay. So yeah, this thing has all kinds of functions. I mean, I've had it now for about a year. No, that's maybe two years. I've only been using it for this last like few months after we moved here. And then we had like, you guys know if you watch my channel, some rain damage or water damage come in the window. So I didn't have a kitchen for a long time. So I just had not been using it. So, you know, I'm kind of new to it too. That's why I was like not quite sure exactly what numbers to put. I have made a... Um, pulled pork in here because I started off in my crock pot and I had people coming over and it was not cooking because it was such a big hunk of meat so I threw it in here and just pressured the heck out of it and it was done in half an hour even though I already had like six hours on high in my crock pot so uh, it was kind of funny I'm like you know what I'm just gonna transfer it my friend's like yeah yeah do it so we put it in here and uh, it finished cooking it for me but again I'm gonna wait till I kind of hear it unlock and <clears throat> There's like a little silver pin right here on the side that kind of keeps it from uh, opening too. So you can kind of see that. Let me see if it's... Well, it's still... I'm getting ahead of myself. We just have to wait. Be patient. I was going to mention to you guys how I do this, but I thought, oh, okay, I'll make a tutorial just like I did the other day with the uh, enchiladas verdes, but let's see. Chicken enchiladas. See, if I try to turn it, it turns a little bit, but it won't open. Because it still has some pressure built up in there. 
That's probably not really the pressure. That's probably more for the steam. Okay. And there we go. And now I can open it. And it is boiling away. Hope you guys can see in there, yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. Potatoes are very soft. And the meat, hopefully I can show you. I'm going to plate a little bit up because... I made some beans. I told you guys in the last video how I make my beans really quick. You're just gonna boil like two quarts of water. It depends on how many beans. And then maybe, uh, so set it to boil or, you know, get it boiling. And then in the meantime, you pick over like two, three cups of dry pinto beans and just um, pick out any ones that look bad or if there's little rocks because sometimes that happens. And then rinse them off um, like in a colander because they can be dusty. And then put those in your boiling water. Uh, wait till they all kind of start coming up to the top of the water boiling kind of rapidly and then put the lid on it turn it down to like a simmer like a good simmer not a rolling boil but just uh, it's boiling kind of moving for 90 minutes I do an hour and a half and then I take the lid off add uh, a teaspoon or two of salt to your taste and then cover it back up let it go for another five or ten minutes until they're soft so if you eat one and it's kind of grainy it's not ready but if you eat one and it's totally soft not obliterated like some of these look kind of obliterated but like you you'll know when you bite it if it's grainy you're not it's not ready <laughs> so just give it you know another 10 15 minutes just keep tasting them here and there i'll just put a couple pieces here just so you guys can see and my family likes a lot of sauce so i would put you know a boatload of sauce like that and i guess i'm gonna have to use a spoon because i didn't bring a spoon out but the meat i'm just pushing like with the slightest amount of pressure and it's just coming apart that's what you want to see. Um, you know, it's going to be nice and tender and delicious. So, again, um, now that I know, maybe the first time, if it's just the meat, go 30 minutes. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, so, the first round that we did with the, you know, brown it, put our sauce in with the little chicken bouillon and water. Give it 30 minutes, and then open it up, you know, release your pressure, open it up. Put in your potatoes and your uh, cilantro, and then give it maybe five to seven more minutes. Um, 10 minutes on potatoes really makes them really soft. So if you want a little bit of a chewier, you know, potato that's not completely super soft, do five to seven minutes instead of like 10. Uh, but if you like them softer, you know, go 10. Or if your meat wasn't quite ready and you opened it, but you don't want to cover it and then give it five minutes by the meat. That's, I could have just covered it back up again and given it another five minutes of pressure, but I didn't want to do that because it's like every time you have to release it and do everything. So I sacrificed my potatoes a little bit, but obviously they still kept their shape. So they're not completely <laughs> obliterated. Um, but that's it guys so enjoy I serve them with you know corn tortillas but if you like flour whatever you like um, usually I also have some Mexican rice on here but I was being lazy so I did not make any but uh, it's good to go all right thanks for watching guys and I'll see you at the next one bye now <laughs>